Today I am going to be talking about the tactical advantage opportunities in Battlefield 4. Now, there's a lot of them. And it's not just where your player is and where his is. There is also the vehicles involved, weapons, maps. For example, as you see, I'm in an LAV right now. Usually, an attack helicopter, as you can see on the screen, versus an LAV, usually the attack helicopter is going to win. But if I do that, the attack helicopter is not going to win. So there's certain tactical advantages that can be gained and lost that can ba balance the scales in your favor or tip them away from your favor such as this guy right here if you parachute in above your enemies they may or may not know you're there but you're gonna have the drop on them except for that guy most of the time people do uh... there is also cover because as most of you know in battlefield cover can be blown away most of it anyway and if you're hiding behind a concrete slab and it's all you got for cover, there's nowhere else to go, and it gets blown away, you're forced to just stand there and shoot at the enemy, where and they're probably going to end up shooting you. So you really have to consider your cover choices, whether they can or can't be blown away. There is also the factor of vehicles like you saw against the attack helicopter um, and you'll see in a minute here just because there's a guy in an inf infantry vehicle known as an LEV doesn't necessarily mean you're done for because you can do strategic movements such as that and what he did he was on the semi roof just above the tank and he hopped down and dropped C4 on it. That's another advantage that you can gain in Battlefield. Height advantages. You know, the elevators on a lot of the maps. The staircases. The ladders. Um, bit sniper fire from buildings. Especially on maps such as Siege of Shanghai. Flood Zone. Rogue Transmission. Anyway, so that does come into play quite a bit. Uh, as you'll see, me and a friend were about to go up the tower and try and take the base. Guns also play a good part in tactical advantage because if you pop around a corner and there's a guy with an LMG on the opposite side and you've got your dinky little shotgun you're not going to do much to him and he's going to mow you down and here's another play where the height advantage comes in because we're higher up they can't see as much as us and we can see more of them there were just too many enemies but on the other hand back to the gun situation if you were to pop around the corner he had a sniper rifle and you had an LMG you could suppress him and take the shots at him and take probably take him down unless he got lucky for a shot off at you now most of you know this but I'm just gonna review it anyway the main battle tank versus say an LEV the tank's usually going to win unless the tank has uh, the LEV has tow missiles or something. If there's a transport helicopter, you see, going against either a scout or an attack helicopter, the transport helicopter generally is the one to lose unless you have very skilled, accurate gunners, because they can just inflict more damage than you can. Simple as that. Um with the LAV it usually is better at taking out air I mean not air land transport vehicles and infantry rather than 
an armored tank. But the tanks are very weak to infantry. I know this sounds crazy, mainly because of the fact that usually you just shoot someone in the face with a tank shell, laugh at them, and that's that. But if you have two or three guys shooting RPGs at a tank, you get three RPGs at, off at it. That's 75 damage. It's already down to 25 health. It doesn't matter how many guys he shoots. Unless he kills all of you, he's going to win. I mean, he's going to lose. Such as this guy. He's smart. I was just stupid. He actually got a couple of rockets off at me before I killed him. And that's just one guy. So infantry really can screw over a tank. <clears throat> but that's something you never want to do. Tanks always win against light transport vehicles such as quad bikes, dirt bikes, MRAPs, which are basically armored Humvees. And tanks always lose to slams. Unless you see the slams. Tanks generally lose to attack helicopters unless you can get a lucky shot off them. Uh, they almost always... Well, I really can't even say which. It's kind of even against attack boats. You don't see much tank versus attack boat gameplay other than this map, usually. Mainly because if you're getting the drop on the attack boat, it could be done for. But... If the t attack boat has active protection and TV missiles, it can do a lot of damage to you while you can't do any to it. So, you just want to keep all those factors in mind when you're deciding where to go in a vehicle or on foot. If you see a tank, don't think, okay, I'm going to immediately avoid that area. Because you might be able to take it down and your team could move up because of that. So, you always want to put your tactical advantage into consideration when you're attacking bases, MCOMs, the guy with the bomb and obliteration, attack, shooting at helicopters with RPGs. If the helicopter has a very small sight of you, most likely it doesn't know that you're going to shoot an RPG at it, so you can probably get the hit on it if you're good enough with an RPG or a small. But oddly, and I hate to say this because I hate it when people do this, another strategic advancement is that guy right there. Camping in corners is one of the most strategic things you can do. It's also one of the cheapest. But if you run around a corner and a guy is sitting right there with a shotgun and shoots you right in the face, you're not even going to have time to react. So you're really losing the tactical situation there. And I'm not saying go camp, because I hate it when people camp. It doesn't take skill. It's not good. You're not good if you go 20-1 and one when you're camping. Mainly because if you're just sitting there, you know somebody's going to come, and they don't know you're there. So basically, you're getting shots off at them before they even know you're there. And... I mean, I went 46 and 0 in the uh, Battlefield 4 beta in the scout helicopters. I wasn't camping; I was mowing people down with it. That just shows the sheer power against infantry the helicopter has with the 7.62 mil millimeter minigun rounds. I don't fly around with splash damage, idiotic 25 millimeter cannons. I don't like them at all. Um. I have about two minutes left, just, I'm sure you know, but just saying. Uh, and carbines usually can outdo assault rifles, especially with the new patch that assault rifles take almost one more bullet to kill. Because carbines, depending on the carbine, usually shoot faster and can do almost as much or more damage, especially with the new update. And LMGs usually outdo carbines and assault rifles because they have a good, decent rate of fire, long range, and a high mag capacity. And 
Sniper rifles, it depends on the situation, but they can outdo almost anything. It depends on the range. Because if you have a guy sitting a mile away with a sniper rifle, he's obviously going to be able to shoot you faster than you can even figure out where he is if he's good enough with a sniper rifle. And carbine versus carbine, as right there, it depends on the carbines. If he didn't have an M M MX4, I probably could have killed him and if I had more time. Because the MX4 is actually one of the most overpowered PDWs, in my opinion. Not PDWs, carbines, in my opinion. Mainly because of its rate of fire and hip fire spread. And right here, I almost get run over by the skyscraper trying to get to Delta. And my friend goes down and grabs the boat and almost gets crushed by it. Uh, and like I said, if you're in on foot, don't underestimate your power. Because right about here, I almost get killed by a helicopter, but I don't. Never estimate your power. That's my message of the day. Okay, this is SlimJim87. Enjoy that RPG kill. I'll talk to you guys later.